church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe Jesus is God. We're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. We believe that prayer moves the hand of God, and it's normal for every believer to be intimate with God and devoted to His cause. At our church, we believe the Bible is God's Word. It's real, it's living, and it's active. We believe freedom is the heart of God for every believer, and we value humor, simplicity, teamwork, and a positive outlook on life. At our church, we're about developing great relationships with God, each other, and those in our community. At our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on the cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and will not water down or candy coat that message, ever. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we're not concerned about where you've been, but where you're going. We believe that all people matter to God, and therefore matter to us. Today, you have chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially life-changing message. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our church. There's some man, Dr. Les Semra. Of course, he's in half. Yes, he is. Him and his son. Do I need me over here? Yeah. He's about the recording. Yeah. And it won't record it. No? Yeah, record it. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Amen. It's good to have you all here at the Lord's table. I don't know, you we're, we're having technical difficulties. You won't hit me, so we're not going to let him get us down. Amen. So this morning, we're going to be singing a cappella and do your handbook out. Which one you got? The right one? The red, red handbook. Uh, I don't know if you got that many. Red handbook. Yeah. I got one. I'll let you know. Yeah. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Uh, I don't know whether to 
to pray for God to heal her or God to take her home. You know, you just don't know. That's what we do. Yeah, amen. So just pray for recovery of God's healing in her life. And, uh, uh, and that she wouldn't fight it. Uh, she accepted the Lord. Boy, she, it took her <laughs> till her old age to accept the Lord because she's very strong-headed, you know. But um, I'd like to keep that in prayer. And we have that blessed assurance, the first song we're going to yeah. sing, that yeah, that's Lord. where our home's going to be. But let's go before the Lord. And Father, I just lift up these concerns to you, Lord. You know they weigh on my heart. And Lord, any other concerns that are out there uh, in our church family, Lord. I know everybody has loved ones and, and uh and maybe family that aren't saved and, and uh, maybe they're ailing or have a disease or whatever the problem might be, Lord. We just come before you and we ask that uh, you lead them home to you and that you would uh, blossom in their heart, Lord, that they come to know you, Father God. And Lord, that we could be an instrument in, in uh, bringing them to know who you are. Lord, we ask that you bless our hearts to hear your word today. Bless our ears to uh, hear and our eyes to see truth for what it is. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, representative of our church from Waldeis, Indiana. Most, most people didn't know where that was. Waldeis? Where's Waldeis? Although, hmm. Well, it's so good. It's so good. Well, let's see, to be able to go and I know. Hadn't been in another church since you and, and uh, Mike and I went to that one in Nashville, and it was uh, yeah, it was awesome church as well. But uh, it's so nice that you can go any place in this nation and yes, be a fellow worshippers and, and uh, enjoy their company. Amen. 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 You know, it doesn't matter what name is over the door. You can feel yes. the spirit of the Lord yes. when it's in the heart of the people. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't matter what's the, what name's up at the church or the middle name. It's like you believe in Jesus, you're a brother and sister. Amen. And we carry the Spirit of the Holy Spirit within us into the church. Amen. He connects with the other people that yep. also have Him in their lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. They may have a different belief. I mean, they might look at Scripture and believe it means one way, we might believe it means another way, but really, if it doesn't, if it doesn't have anything to do with your salvation in Christ, <clears throat> we're brothers and sisters. And you know, I like to look at it this way too, brothers and sisters fight when they're growing up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, sometimes we disagree as brothers and sisters when we're growing up. So it's the same thing in Christ, when we're growing up in the Lord, we disagree on certain things, but... Hey, we're still brothers and sisters. Churches, churches have personalities just like people do. And, and not every personality meshes with another one. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. Not everybody you meet is going to be our friend. We might love them as a brother or sister, but they're not necessarily going to be our friend. Mm -hmm. True. It's, it, this little town knows that. Must have been a really boom town at one time. But it was the streets were you know, like a hundred foot wide downtown. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, it was an amazing little town and it was all abandoned. The school was run down and uh, they had oh, um, yeah. the church or the gymnasium. Was it yeah. all oil town? I think it was more cattle. Yeah, cattle. Cattle. Yeah. cattle yeah. Yeah. What where were you near? Adeline. It's about like our small towns, they're all run down. Yeah. LaGro and Spikerville and some of those towns used to be big booming yeah. towns, you know, when the Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Not anymore. Yeah. And then, you get around these huge cities yeah. and it's just Oh no, yeah. Man, it's just a nightmare. It is. It's a nightmare. For and I used to drive a truck and I I I just I don't like driving through the cities at all. <laughs> so, well, it's worse than it was back in my day. <laughs> I'm kind of shocked at uh, 
They didn't know where it was, but that fellow on the airplane knew where Nobo was. Just told you where Nobo was. Nobo, yeah. You know where Nobo was. I don't think Mike ever gets it. He lived in Nobo. He was on a plane, the guy who said he thought Bob had ever been to her in Nobo, and that's where he was from. <laughs> on a jet airplane. <laughs> I ran into somebody in Washington, D.C. from Wabash, and, and the more she got to talking, the more we figured out we even went to school together. Oh, my we, didn't, we didn't remember each other, but we went to school together. My, my daughter was talking to the other day, and she said I went to the hospital to visit uh, one of her clients that was up there, and she had passed away, but she ran into uh, uh, her cousins, and she couldn't remember the names, but she knew, she knew who they were from, you know, just being around the family. Your boy your uh, boy's granddaughter, right? Oh, my <laughs> so it's kinda of funny how you, you can recognize somebody but you don't really know. But you, you know that you know you're yeah, that. Yeah, and if you go to a family reunion, you ain't been there for years, you know, <laughs> relations there. You're talking to me, you don't know who they are, you don't want to say nothing. <laughs> Guess who is that? My my mom and dad pulled into a restaurant down in Florida and the waitress and the weight on them was a little gal from Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, small world. Yeah. Do we have any testimonies or anything this morning? I know uh, if you're not sick from the flu, we can testify and get the full work we have to copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, amen. Well, we're continuing on in, in chapter Matthew chapter 16. And uh, we're going to pick it up in verse 21. And if you remember, uh, Jesus said, just pray Peter for recognizing who he really was, that he was. Uh, the son of the living God, and he had just told Peter, praising Peter, that blessed are you, Peter, by Jonah, because only the Father could have revealed that to you. So he had just got done praising Peter. So we're going to get into uh, 21, and then I'm going to stop and give you a little bit of input. Uh, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Now, um, as we're going to see, this doesn't set very well with Peter. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it was scriptural uh, and it was even predicted in Isaiah 53. If you you know, if you'd want to read 53, 3 through 12, it kind of describes how Jesus is predicted in Isaiah that he must suffer many things for, for mankind. And I think this marks a time to the end when Jesus starts to describe to his disciples, hey, look, you know, I've been healing, I've been doing miracles, uh, I've been teaching you uh, to love and touch others, but now I need to teach you that it's time for me to go to the cross. It's time for me to suffer and him. It's time for me to sacrifice myself. And um, Jesus wanted them to understand what was going to happen, and but what must happen for all mankind. Now, some people don't want to hear about death. They don't want to hear about what the future is going to be. They, they don't want to talk about death. If you start talking about death in the family, it's usually like, oh, don't, don't, don't talk like that. You know, don't, don't, don't talk like that. Or you might say, you know, I think we ought to get our plots, you know, going. Oh, no, no, let's don't hear. I don't want to hear about death. You know, they're just kind of taken off by it. But I'm going to tell you something. We are all going to die. Every one of us sitting here today is going to die. That's going to come. So we shouldn't be afraid of death or, oh, let's not talk about it. We shouldn't be afraid of it. If anything, 
uh, when it comes, it's a beautiful thing. Amen. Because <laughs> we no longer have to live in this world. We're going to be with F, we're going to be in heaven with Jesus. So some people don't really want to talk about it. Um, so when is the right time to talk about it? We have to face certain things in our life, right? Mm -hmm. And Jesus was trying to get his disciples to understand, look, you know, I have to teach you this. You have to know it's coming. And that's really what he was trying to get them to understand. It's coming. You know, none of us like to lose a loved one. I know I'm facing losing my mom, Kristen, and especially since her sister's getting ready to pass. I know that's coming. And none of us like to lose a loved one. It, it hurts. It's painful. It's sorrowful. But for the one who's gone, it's wonderful. Because especially if they know Jesus, they're no longer suffering down here. They're with him. They're happy. But we are the ones that are sad because we're going to miss them. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm sad because they die. I'm sad because I'm going to miss them until I meet them again in heaven. But I know that I will. I know that I will. There are some churches even today that have taken out, oh, let's not talk about the cross. Cross means death. Let's not talk about cross. They've even taken out the blood. Let, oh, well, let's not talk about the blood. That's too gory. That that's we don't want we don't want to mention that. We might, you know, we might hurt some little ear, some child's ear out there that they hear, Jesus, they killed Jesus. You know, and even that picture can be offensive to churches. It was offensive to a church. And um, actually asked for me to remove it from there. I, I'm not going to say. No. Did they ask you to remove it from here? No. Okay. No. It was a church at Hamia. And I, I was asked to remove it. Why? Because it, it um, showed, and I, I got to tell you something, that is a touch of what Jesus suffered. Oh, yeah. He was unrecognizable, the Bible said. Uh -huh. So picture somebody who has been eaten by animals, beat up by whips, you know, bump. I mean, he was unrecognizable. Uh -huh. That's nothing. And we do our children no good when we don't teach them the proper way of what the Word says. Amen. Amen. We can't baby it. We can't tiptoe around it. The blood is what cleanses us. But there are a lot of churches today that want to leave it out. They don't want to talk about it because that doesn't sound very good. You know, we don't want to, we want to make sure we have positive atmosphere. We want to make sure we have great music so people want to come and hear the, the uplifting sound of the music and the... Uh, jokes that the pastor has to say and to get everybody laughing and, and uh, the feel-good messages. Might hurt your ties. Yeah. <laughs> Often, you know, and, and that's hard to say. But to so it. true. So true. I mean, after all, they worked all week, right? They don't want to come and hear that, you know, if we don't turn and change, that we might end up in hell and burn. They don't, they don't want to hear that, uh, that Jesus suffered and died for us. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear the jokes. They want to hear the uplifting, you know, God wants the best for you. Well, sure he does. But he wants the best for your spirit, man, not your soul, man. Not your flesh, man. It's not, it's not all about the I wants, I want, I need, I need, I need. We need what Jesus wants us to have. Amen. His will, not our will. And, you know, prophecy, and I, I, I'm not a big, huge follower of prophecy, but it's, it's so happening so fast right now, it's unbelievable in the news how quickly it's, it's just happening. And, and even though I started thinking about the apostate church that, that uh, the Bible talks about, and I, and I started thinking about 
these ministries that do only preach the good thing and they leave out the uh, cross or they leave out the blood and they preach the feel good messages. Now, some people tell you straight out somebody, some huge minister, great big smile, going straight to hell. <laughs> some people will tell you that. I don't know. I'm not against the judge. But I want to tell you one thing if you do not preach the blood of Christ and the cross, and that Jesus is the only way, there's something wrong. That's mm -hmm. right. Because I can go to a church and be pumped up too. I mean, and I like a good pumped up message. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes we need that. But we have, we can't leave out the rest. We have to have the whole word, not just sections Amen. of it. Amen. Amen. So Jesus had just praised Peter. And... And I, I think we could all say Peter was a likable guy. I mean, he was one of those men. He was just quick to jump, quick to speak, uh, yeah. <laughs> get out of the boat type of guy, you know. He was just like, okay, Jesus, I'm going to go. And he'd run with it. Or he'd step out in faith. And he also spoke quickly out of his mouth. He didn't want Jesus to say, I'm going to suffer and I'm going to die. But think about it. Peter, from the time he was a little child, had been taught, what? That the Messiah was going to come and the Messiah was going to be, what? A, a powerful king. king, a powerful leader, mm -hmm. a military type person. Mm -hmm. He wasn't taught or trained that the Messiah would be sacrificing, loving, serving. A servant for all. One that would go to the cross for you maybe and die. He wasn't taught that way. So when Jesus said this, it was like, oh, what? Oh, no, 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 Jesus. No, no. God forbid, no. This is not going to happen to you. This is not going to happen to you. You know, sometimes as Christians, we don't mean for it to happen. But we can speak out of turn. You ever had another Christian give you advice and, and you're like, oh, I didn't sound like a Christian. Or, some, or Christians speak out of turn. Sometimes we don't think before we speak. It just uh -huh. kind of comes out because it's the flesh in us, the uh -huh. soul man in us, not the spirit man. So we have to be careful what we even hear from other Christians. Amen. Well, Peter... He was a follower of Jesus, but he, he he's thinking like his want, his own self, the man self. He's thinking like, oh no, I don't want this to happen. Uh-uh, this is not going to happen. And Jesus quickly puts him in place. That Get behind me, Satan, he said. Oh, can you imagine follower of Jesus Christ? Jesus had just praised him for knowing that he was son of the living God because only the Father could reveal it to him. And now he's like saying, get behind Satan. So one minute he's praising him, next minute he's telling him that he's Satan. No, he's telling him he's acting in the emotions, the words of Satan, the man said. See, there's a spirit side to us, mm -hmm. and then there's a man self to us, mm -hmm. right? Well, the spirit side should always be about others before ourselves. That's right. Not ourselves before others. Mm -hmm. That's how we know when we're being led by Satan. If we're thinking about ourselves before we're thinking about anybody else, Usually that's the man side of you, and usually that's Satan behind the scenes pushing you. Oh, you know that looks good. You need to go get that. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 22 and 23. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Here's Peter rebuking Jesus. I love that. <laughs> saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. <coughs> but he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. 
For you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. Does anybody else have a New Living Translation? Uh, or NIV, maybe? Um, well, NIV, it says the same thing. Does it? Oh, does yeah. I get it? The New Living Translation says it in a unique way. I kind of like how it says it. What's, John, you guys have the New Living? You are merely from human point of view and not from God's. Human point of view. That's good, too. You are setting your mind on a human's point of view, not God's. And see, that's how we need to know the difference. There's a human side to us. Human, human, human mind, human heart. And there's a spirit side to us, which is God's will, what he wants for us. So, you, you know, we're getting down to a scripture here where I think is probably one of the most important scriptures in the whole Bible. And there's many, don't get me wrong. But um, Peter today, like most people, he wanted comfort. He wanted the feel-good message. He wanted the everything's going to be okay message. Um, Jesus' response, I'm sure, shocked him. Jesus recognized the voice behind the human side, say. Now, Barclay suggested that Jesus was saying to Peter, Peter, your place is behind me, not in front of me. Isn't that just like us sometimes? We get ahead of God, don't we? Mm -hmm. We get ahead of God. You know, I can look back over the years, and we haven't really been here that many years, but I can look back over how I got ahead of God because... He gave me a couple words, a couple things, and here's Roxy. I'm going to go do it. I was a Peter. I was a Peter. I took that, I ran with it, and I did what he, I thought he wanted me to do. But see, I didn't wait. And that's exactly how Peter was. Take charge. Go do it. God wants me to do this. Go do it. Take charge. When I did, when you did, when you don't wait to understand the will of God, then we're acting in our, our own human nature. So uh, he wasn't mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Jesus exposed how Peter came into this saint, uh, satanic way of thinking because. He made a deliberate choice to reject God and embrace Satan. He heard from Jesus what Jesus was telling him and teaching him, where he would go, what would happen, but he rejected it and put in the voice of Satan. Peter's a perfect example of how sincere a heart coupled with man's thinking can often lead us to disaster. But here's the thing. God will take that disaster and turn it around for good. He always has. Amen. Always will. He will never leave us hanging. You know, he, he's took in things that I started out with and ran with, and he's turned it around for good. Not for me. For someone else. That's God's will. It's never about us. It's about him. It's about others. That's when we know we're in God's will. If we're putting others before ourselves. Peter's rebuke of Jesus is an evidence of the love and mention in Matthew 16, 6. Um, with his mind on things of men, Peter only saw the Messiah as a power, strength, embodied Messiah. Because Peter couldn't handle a suffering Messiah. He couldn't handle that. Oh, wait. I was taught he was supposed to be powerful. Why would he be suffering if he's powerful? You ever wonder, you ever wonder, uh, Paul had to get the healing. You ever wonder?
wonder why he had that ailment, why he had to suffer with that, mm -hmm. why he couldn't just heal himself. Mm -hmm. Do you ever wonder that? Or why God uh, allowed him to suffer like that? Sometimes it keeps us humble, right? It keeps us from going off uh, prideful or getting caught up in pride and thinking we're all that. Yeah. Well, God, I think he doesn't give us those things just to see if we stay faithful even though yeah. we're not saved. Yeah, exactly. You know, because you look at the Bible, I mean, you yeah. know, like Abraham, I mean, and, you know, God promised him a son, but, you know, he waited, I don't know, 20 years or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's like, and then yet yeah, God, you know, said he never strayed from his belief that God couldn't lie, you know. So it's like. Yeah, isn't that something to have that much faith for 20 yeah. years believing you're going to have a kid? I just think about that sometimes. I think there's, I only lasted a couple probably, but, you know, that just shows us we can't give up. We got to keep the faith. We need to have that same kind of faith where I'm saying blessing with our children. Exactly. I have children that appear to be evil. I have no other way to say it, but I know God is going to redeem the time. And He's going to bring them home. You know, I have. I have loved ones living in sin, yeah. you know, and and they don't see, the thing of it is, they don't see they're living in sin. They got a good relationship with God. Them and God's got a relationship, but yet they're doing everything the opposite of what His Word says. Mm -hmm. Now, who, who's, who's God in their life? Yeah. Yeah. Them, yeah. themselves, because they do what they want to do. They get what they want to get, and they don't. They they don't even pick up the, the word, but yet they have a relationship with God. No, they don't. They've made their own God. Mm -hmm. So Peter was thinking in terms of his flesh, the man's side, twenty four through twenty six. Then Jesus said to his disciples. If anyone, now this is the most important, well, this is one of the most important scriptures in all the Bible. Um, I have many that I've got to pick out, but this says, that Jesus said to his disciples, four disciples today, if anyone wishes to come after me, some translations say follow me, be one of my disciples, he must deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So, um, verse 24 You know, I'm, I'm thankful for God's grace. Yeah. I, I'm thankful that he gives us new mercies every morning. I mean, his word says that. But sometimes in, in some churches, grace, 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 grace is on here. And you don't hear the judgment of God. There is judgment of God coming. Yeah. You know, we may not want to talk about it. We may not even want to look at it. We may be fearful for our loved ones and what they may suffer, but there is judgment coming. And for us to just overlook it, that's not being a, a true follower of Christ. He wants us to pay attention to what he's trying to teach us. I'm thankful for his grace. Um, but we could ask ourselves, are we truly Christians? Are we just playing the game of having something that uh, we don't really possess. <laughs> I think there's a ton of those in the churches today. They possess, or they say they're Christian. They come to church. They hear what the pastor has to say. They might sing a few songs. But out throughout the week, they're out there living a life of sin, you know, doing what they want to do. Not what the Bible says. What do you think it means when he says, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself. Deny himself. Deny himself. 
What's that mean? Total surrender. That's total surrender to what God wants of you. Okay. Now, some of you may not look at it like this, but I, when I was out there in the world, what I wanted to do was go to the bar. Go to the bar, go to the bar, go to the bar. Uh, go find a hot guy. I don't know what, I mean, or a hot woman, or what, how we want to say it. Or, or it was always about uh, what I wanted, what I wanted. Never about what God might want me to do. Surrender is denying ourself what we want for the purpose of God's will in our life. It could be anything. Deny yourself of alcohol, deny yourself of food, deny yourself of, um, you know, new, uh, a new car, new job, new whatever. Deny yourself things that you want. Deny yourself even a dream that you want for God's will in your life, for God's purpose in your life. Um, you know, that's not easy to do. No. It's hard. We could ask ourselves, are we really truly Christians? You know, sometimes I think, I was looking over this, I was like, man, I haven't really denied myself much lately. I think I could use a little bit of work on it. And uh, a lot of people like to look at it like fasting. But it's so much more than denying yourself food or denying yourself drink. Or whatever. Yeah. The Bible talks about the, you know, the lust of the eyes, the lust yeah. of the flesh. You know, it's not just physical lust. I mean, as far as sex or something like that, it's all the other things that the world has to offer. It's you know, like you say, whether it's a new car, a new house, or I, mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with those things. You have to understand what they are. Though. They're temporary. They're passing away. They are just things. You know, and get our. You know, our society, you know, everybody, not like the guys I work with, you all got to have a big fancy pickup truck. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I know for a fact my boss is just a tax write-off. But, you know, I look at things like that sometimes and I think, how many people could be fed with that money? Yeah. You know, how many, you know, how, you know, you got to understand that that stuff's just temporary. Mm -hmm. And they might have that in this world, but what about when this world's over? What do they have? You know, it's like they want to respect of other being by things, you know. And, you know, do we want to please men or do we want to please God? You know, and that's, that's where you have to go back to, you know, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. That's always our biggest obstacle, though, is just self. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get self out of the road, and it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It is hard. Yeah, it is. But yet, that's powerful. Why, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and see, that's why I think that verse is so very important because it is about getting self out of the way. Yeah. Well, and, remember, and I, we, yeah. remember when we talked that one time? There's a battle going on every day. It's the battle of the spirit and the flesh. One of the things talks about you know, the, the spirit's against the flesh, and the flesh is against the spirit. That battle's there every day. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's something that we. You know, we have to consciously say, Holy Spirit, you take control. Uh -huh. You know, get me out of the way. But the world says, oh, you can dream it. If you can dream it, you can have it. <laughs> That's what the world tells you. Go for it. Go for the gusto. You do be all you can be. <laughs> but no, it should never be about us. It should always be about you. As Bruce was talking, the Lord brought to my mind, we even lust our time. Yeah. Yes. Because that's probably the first thing that we do, because we want to do what we want to do and not give God the place in our day that he deserves. And I'm way guilty of this. And we get busy doing other things and do our thing instead of God's things. And that's where the problem starts, because we get up thinking, mm -hmm. I have this to do today, and I have that to do today, yeah. instead of thinking, well, let's see what God has for me to do today. Mm -hmm. And li like I said, I am way guilty of that. Lord, you said that, and it made me think of something I think about here a while back. And you're, and you're right, probably time is probably the thing that we 
Because you think about it, I mean, I, I, I get up in the morning, I got to get to work, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I come home at night, and I sit there and watch, I'm tired, so I sit there and watch the Bluetooth for a couple hours, <laughs> you know. Anymore now, I've got a smartphone. So then I spend an hour or two on the phone, you know. I'm, I'm texting my kids, I'm texting people, you know. I'm looking at different things I want to look at, you know, as far as looking up something or reading about something, the news or whatever, you know. And I think about that that smartphone, you know, how many hours? I think they say the average person oh, spends yeah. six, seven hours on the phone. And then I think about well, how many hours did I spend in the Bible today? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> That's the point right there. You know, they uh, did a survey and said even on the Internet, the average person spends almost three hours a day on the Internet. Yeah. A day. Well, not average. I'm not there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't spend it on the internet, but I do spend a couple hours on my phone anymore, probably. You know, here we do us all good to fast the TV for a while, and, and the time that we would fast watching TV, be in God's Word, and we bring the Word. Brother Randy. Brother Randy. But yeah, and, you know, even if it would just be fast for. 15, 20, 15 minutes, half an hour of the time that you would sit down and watch TV and make an effort to open the Bible and read it. The, 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 true, the true fast would be is if we put it aside during a time that we normally don't want to miss the TV. Ron and I like to watch Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. Yeah, that's old and, people shows. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm an old people mind. And, and so we, if, you know, if we're sincere and we decide we're going to fast that time, which is the highlight kind of of our day, you know, then that's a real sacrifice. That's yeah. for us, you know, putting our flesh. Yeah. And that sounds so silly. No, but that's when it gets to be real. That's when it begins to get real because it costs you something. Now, I'm not saying we're going to do it. (laughs) 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 Don't hold her, do it. (laughs) Okay. As you've all heard me say, the Word of God works when you work. You got the work. That's borderline unruly. I'm just being real honest with you. I'm not going to sit up and be a hypocrite, suggest all those things, and then say, well, you know, I'm going to do this when nine months out of ten, I don't do it. See, that's the most important thing is the honesty. Being honest is a step to growing. Yeah. I was going to say, the thing is, not only does it take our time, like the TV and the phone, think what it teaches us. You know, yeah. Hitler said, if he could control the media, he could control yeah. the people. Yeah. What does the TV and the phone do to the people? Yeah. You know, they're teaching, they're teaching things contrary to God's word. Absolutely. You know, and, mm-hmm. you know, Hollywood, you know, people watch that for years and years, you know. What's it done to our society, you know? Yeah. Desensitized. Yeah. I was thinking about... The church and not want to talk about blood or anything. Mm-hmm. And I'll go to the movie and watch just blood and deaths. You know, <laughs> all over the place. Jeez. That's exactly yeah, right. Isn't it? Well, yeah. they play the video games anymore, too, Ron. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. little kids. Yeah. But see, they don't yeah. want to see yeah. their Messiah, their Savior, with blood and deaths and all that That's stuff. That's right. It's, it's just it's just how it works. It puts, it puts a responsibility back on them. When they have to acknowledge that he did that for them, exactly. and then that puts that responsibility, and they don't want to take it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly right. Thank you. I like the interactiveness in the in the church. It's part of the spirit growing when we can speak up like that. I know a lot of ministers wouldn't agree with that, and I'm not one because the Holy Spirit works in each young person, as you've heard me say before. And that's how we gain growth from each other. Now, back in ancient days, the cross meant death. Yes, it, did. it meant crucifixion. Shame. Shame. And, uh, you know, we like to wear crosses around our neck. And what, what's a cross mean to us? That we believe in Jesus. Right? Follow after Jesus. Amen. Well, if we wore it back then, they'd look at us 
-hmm. Why would you want sign of death. the sign of death on you? Well, today, I know most people take it the wrong way. The cross, when I don't have mine on today because my chain broke, but. Okay, great. <laughs> my dog. Mm -hmm. But anyway. How many times has it been broken? Shut up, Mike. <laughs> We'd like to know a little more about it. <laughs> All right. Your, your All right. angel dog. <laughs> My angel dog. He looks like an angel, whether he is or not. He's a wolf and she clothes. You know, I can get I have the power to get, tell you to get out of the church. <laughs> Some of these fine people might disagree. <laughs> about the cross is uh, the denomination that if you take the cross, if you want one the cross was a stake, and you know, I, I always think it's interesting, they want to change the subject right away when it's the cross, they don't want yeah. to talk about the blood of Jesus, they want to tell you it's a stake, I don't want this, I don't care if it was a stake, a telephone pole, a fence post, <laughs> what it was, bottom line is, Jesus Amen. shed his blood for me, on it. and you know, if you don't want to talk about it, that's your business, but. Right, I mean, you know, if you get off on terms like that, if yeah. you went really across, it was a stake, then you lose the whole thing out of that. Yeah. 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 Right, you just you lose the whole thing. Yeah. Well, they want to not talk about the cross. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. they don't want to accept Jesus as yeah. God. But back then it meant death, you know? Yeah. And today we wear it as a symbol of our resurrection, mm -hmm. you know, our, our life in Christ. Well, mm -hmm. um, it also means something else, though. It means death. To us, yeah. death to ourself, to our way, denying ourself is death. And it's painful sometimes. If you want that chocolate cake, <laughs> bag of m and no, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> Cheesecake. And, and you deny yourself, no, you can't have that. And it's, it's, a, it's painful. Maybe not painful like a hurt painful, but it's denying yourself the satisfaction of what you get <coughs> if you received it. Even where it across today, um, believing it should be so much more for us. It should be a sign to others that we have said, I'm going to deny myself the pleasure of myself and live out my life and the will of God. And if that means sometimes that you have to remove yourself from other people in your life that is causing causing you to fall a little bit, then that means you have to remove yourself from their life. You might have friends in your life that are friends to you that you've been friends for a long, long time, but now you're a follower of Christ and you're doing your very best to follow after him. Well, this friend keeps influencing you. Well, what are they doing? Cussing, 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 cussing. Every other word comes out of the mouth. It's F-U-C-K or it's G-D or it's something or they're always talking about sex or whatever. And you've explained to them, hey, you know, uh, I'd prefer it if, if you didn't use that language around me just because, you know, we're friends. And they continue to go on. There comes a time in your life you may just have to remove yourself from being friends with them. Mm -hmm. Because why? Well, if you hang around it long enough, it's going to rub off. Mm -hmm. And if it rubs off, then it's pulling you back down to the old man, the old self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said to his friend, you don't, you don't appreciate it. And, you know, I've told people that, but I also have told them, you know, mm -hmm. I wish you wouldn't do that because I love you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that you're condemned not by what goes into the mouth, but what comes exactly. out. And I'm praying for exactly. you that that wouldn't come out of your mouth, you know, yeah. because, like I say, you know, not so much, I, I've come to the I'm not so worried about them guys cussing around me. I don't like it. But I gotta work with them and 
Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going to get too wound up if they decide yeah. that's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. And you know, I know 20 years ago, there goes I. Mm -hmm. That was me. Right. And I'm like, but I do let them know that, you know, I'm concerned about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, you know. Sometimes, like your workplace, like you said, it's your yeah. workplace. What are you going to do? It's your job. It's how you provide for your family. Yeah. Well, it can kind of, you know, close your ears yeah. to it. But there's some things that really get me riled, and that's yeah. you and God's name and being. And I just, mm. ugh, I just can't hardly stand to hear that. It just, I don't know how to explain it. It hurts my mm. heart. I feel my heart just go, ugh. Because I, the, I know the person just, just does not understand what they're saying. No. They're condemning their That's self to hell yeah. every time that comes out of their mouth. And, and you know, it's like I want to go give them a Bible lesson, you know, but you can't always do that in your workplace. Even And they wouldn't receive it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to win people by constantly correcting them and judging them. We'll turn them off. Yeah. You know, we've got a unsaved family. We were with this, you know, over the holidays that as I was sitting there and they were using the name Jesus Christ disrespectfully, right. and they were saying some other things. Mm -hmm. And I was cringing too, but the last thing I need to do is to correct a sinner for what he normally does, which is sin. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, you know, they're not going to receive it. And if, if we can just love them, it's going to be the love that turns them. Yeah. The yeah, Lord it. says it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. <coughs> mm -hmm. A lot of times they do that just to see how we react. Yeah. As exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They can do it our, our yeah. witness. Especially if they've been told by another person, yeah. you know, I really wish you'd kind of behave yourself, and especially when so and so's around because they really don't like this, or they may be, you know, a Christian and they really don't want to hear that, and they've been told, you know, behave yourself or something. What do they want to do? Well, yeah. They want to act up even yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's really just about love, loving, you know, saying a prayer underneath your breath. Yeah. You know, at me out there where I work, it's a lot of the young people <coughs> come in with a lab or the layout or the gate rooms that the CNNs are running, and uh, that's a normal for them to cuss and carry on. And our plant manager, he wasn't a church girl or anything, and, but he knew about me, and if he was in there and they even said something bad, he would actually raise his hand and say, stop none of that language in here yeah. and respect for me. Yeah. And he would say, unless you can learn to talk, don't come back in here while this man's working. And I always admired that about yeah. him. And we were talking a week ago down at the gas station and we were talking about that. And he mm -hmm. says he always thought that, you know, that, so I said, well, I get, Yes, in a way, the Lord was laying that on your heart. They had to be, mm -hmm. to be concerned, you know, because, you know, he knew what I'd been through in my life. But uh, I just thought it was very commendable of him to be, a, you know, the plant manager. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, regardless of who was in there, I mean, whether it was an engineer or uh, who, he'd say, not not in here, not, 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 not around him. You know, well, we don't do that. And I've always, everybody talked bad about him, about his judgment, but to me, I looked past all that, and what I remember about it was how he stood up for me, you yeah. know, so I didn't have to listen to that garbage. Yeah. That's what I remember him by, not all the other things, the bad decisions. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. A lot of times we speak from the flesh, and, that, and that's what Peter was doing. And um, the cross wasn't about religious ceremonies. <laughs> It wasn't about <coughs> traditions, uh, spiritual feelings. The cross was a way to execute people. <laughs> Mainly, who is leaning yourself well, as we already said. Execute our self well. Mm -hmm. That's what the cross should mean to us today, is to execute our self will for the will of God. And His will 
as others. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Denying self means to live as uh, other-centered. Jesus was the only person to do this perfectly. You know, we're imperfect people. We can't. I mean, we might start out good. I'm the good for others today. And do a lot of good for others. And the next day do a lot of good for others. And, but sooner or later, you're going to mess up. You're going to be, I want this. I deserve this. I've worked hard, you know. And you might do something totally out of the will of God. Mess up. Well, God got our back covered if we're a true follower. He isn't really doing the best we can do. He says, my nurse, mercies are new for you every morning. Yes, he you. says, I will take what was meant for bad yeah. and turn it around for good. Mm -hmm. So just keep doing the best you can do. Amen. Uh, 27 and 28. For the Son of Man is going to come in his glory of his Father with his angels and will then repay every man according to his deeds. Truly I say to you, there are some of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in the kingdom. You ever wonder what that meant? I used to read that scripture and I used to go, what's that mean? There's still men alive that was alive way back then or still alive today? Well, next week we'll get into what that really means. But um, we're going to see in chapter 17 that Jesus leads them up on a mountain. And something amazing happens. Daniel. So, the men that were um, with him at that time, Peter, when he went up on the mountain with Jesus, he sees something amazing. And that's what he was really talking about. Because the glory of God shone on Jesus. Mm -hmm. The glory of God came down, and it's called transfiguration. And I think that that's meaning he got to see something, right? The glory of God's kingdom coming. When I think about sometimes how I feel in my heart when the Holy Spirit touches you, you know, and maybe you're in a, a worship, yeah. worshiping God on your own somewhere, you know, people... Sometimes we have a tendency to not want people to see us worship because we think they're watching us or something, but when we're alone, really, really alone, and we start to worship the Lord, and we just get into that that groove, I don't know what you want to call it, but just the praise and sense, and we just begin to feel His presence, and we begin to feel that annoying pressing on our heart, and we know He's here with us. Sometimes when I feel that love, it's like, and the, uh, the best way I've ever heard it described is uh, like liquid love going down. And it just is that sweet, anointing love. It just envelops you and covers you. And sometimes I think of that and I think, you know, this is the glory of God. That Shekinah glory that only He can do. Only He can touch a man's heart and change it. Only God. Only the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I get, I might, I just, I bawl. I'm sorry. I just, I start crying. And I know that I know that I know that God's right there with me. Mm -hmm. And no matter what you face in your life, yeah. if you praise Him and worship Him and seek after Him to that extent, you too will have that in your life. Amen. And, Amen. Amen. and He can take anything and make it new. Nothing's Lord. impossible with Him. Nothing. Amen. I just want that so much for everybody. I want them to have that. I want them to know that he's there with them. I don't want them to have to question, am I saved? Am I not saved? You know, why is she here in God? And I'm not here in God. What's going on here? I want people to know, but you got to seek. You got yes. to go deep with him. Yes, you do. You know, it's not a flip over page type thing. If you are courting a, a woman or a man, 
you know, going after that one because they were hot to you or for some reason you wanted a relationship with that person and you knew that you knew that that was the one you wanted to live with for the rest of your life. You seek them out. You wear your best clothes, put on your best curtain. You spend as much time with them as you can. Spend as much time, yeah, exactly. You spend as much time with them as you can. But you also do something else. Here's one thing that I think sometimes the church has gotten off into putting on their best for best dress for God or dressing up or putting on the fasana. They're all religious and uh, they're so spiritual. You really know that you know that you know when you love someone and they're a keeper is when they see you at your worst and they still love you. Amen. Be yourself. That's all God wants. He wants you to be yourself now. And he accepts you for who you are. But when he gets in there, he will do the work, not you. Amen. So many times the church today is like, you can't go there. You can't wear that. you got to cut your hair. you got to wear a dress. No, no, no. Be yourself. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let's close in prayer. Mm -hmm. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for this message. I just pray, Lord, that you have touched hearts here today. Lord, I pray that you would begin to work in me and in others, Lord, that we would seek a deeper walk with you, God. That we wouldn't be a Christian that would just come and be satisfied with the comfort of church, but that we'd seek a deeper walk with you, God, that we'd be true followers after you, Lord, that we would deny ourselves the wants, the desires, to seek after your will, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, One thing about that trip. What I really got to enjoy was listening to Christmas music all the way down there. <laughs> Three days I listened to Christmas music, which doesn't seem like we hear it around here as much as, you know, in the old days. So, yeah. you did that, Carol? Yeah. 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 Yeah.